Okay, this is going to be a short video on how to keep your course notes organized so that they don't become this big old jumbled mess by the end of the semester. Uh, we want to keep these things in a very neat and tidy fashion so that when we need to use them as a resource, we can go back and find them uh, and find exactly what we're looking for very quickly. So I'm just going to go open my course notes. I'm going to navigate to my Math 315 specific folder, which I highly recommend you all have. I'm going to open up the R Markdown document, and then I'm going to adjust my screen so that you all can see things better. And so maybe we've got something that looks like this. OK, so if you recall from the template our Markdown file that our studio created for us very early on before we edited things to create our own definitions and examples. There were section headers that looked like this. Um, and when you knit this document, the section header shows up as big bold letters. Okay, well that's good. But it turns out those section headers give us a very easy way to create uh, collapsible sections. So instead of naming this one section header, maybe we want to name this one week one, such that we keep everything organized by weeks. And then down here, when we get into simple random sample, maybe we want week two. Or maybe you're interested in using the exact titles that I give, like, was it called Getting Set Up? And this one I remember on week two was called um, Data and Studies. At least I think that's what they were called. Anyway, I think you get the idea that you can use these section headers however you want. You don't have to choose my labels here. You can choose labels as you see fit as the semester goes on. The benefit of setting up these section headers comes right next to the header itself. Do you see this kind of downward facing triangle? If you click that, watch what happens. Everything in between the current header you just were highlighting right next to, everything in between the current header and the next one is collapsed such that you don't have to look at it every time you're going into this file it essentially shrinks the file contents, even though it still is there. It shrinks the co file contents from what you see such that you don't have to continuously scroll through this ever increasing in length file. And notice week two will have a similar sort of thing. It'll collapse anything below it. So if you start getting all of these week one, week two, week three, week four, you will be able to keep these sections very tightly organized. OK, but look, it gets better. Let's expand these sections. And let's say we wanted to split all our definitions. No, that's a bad idea. I don't even want to encourage that. Let's say we somehow want subsections. Subsection, subsection, we'll name this one subsection 01. This one's subsection 02. And before week two, we'll have more words for whatever goes in subsection 02. Notice the same thing happens as before. Here is this little downward facing arrow right next to subsection 1. And you can guess what it's going to do. Collapse all the stuff within subsection 1 above subsection 2. And subsection 2 gets its own uh, collapse button. OK, so I'm going to leave it to you all with these tools of one, two, three, four, five. I believe it goes all the way to six subsection levels that you can create. But I highly recommend you keep it at like one and two subsection levels. It's very easy to get lost otherwise in what kind of uh, the logic of your own organization. So. Please do use these section levels in your course notes as you go. You can just go back and add to your course notes for whatever you had for week one and week two and coming up on week three. When you knit it, it will still be 
you know, the full length of everything that you had included in your file. But this should very easily help you simplify what you see within the R Markdown document itself.